I'm Elisa Parker. We're broadcasting from the 17th Annual Wild and Scenic Film Festival. It's the largest environmental film fest of its kind in the United States. It's been incredible connecting with extraordinary everyday environmental action heroes, one of which I have here with me is Tom Ocampos. He came here from Canada, from BC. His film is called The Radicals. And he's also the founder of the nonprofit called Beyond Boarding because you are a kick-ass snowboarder as well. <laughs> so welcome, Tomo, to Wild and Scenic. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. How has the festival experience been for you so far? It's been awesome. Yeah? It's just been like so cool to be around so many incredible filmmakers, activists, and just to be at a festival that was born out of a fight for the very rivers that passed by the city is right. so special. It's pretty phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So what inspired your film, The Radicals? And tell everyone a little bit about, about it. Yeah, for sure. So The Radicals, basically, it's this real mixture of genres. It kind of blends action sports with some of the kind of most intense indigenous front lines that are happening across so-called BC right now. And the way we kind of built that nexus between those two genres is we took four snowboarders and surfers that have four very unique relationships with four of these communities. And so basically the surfer or the snowboarder brings you into the community and the community story is told by the community. And you know, in so many ways, the film had kind of two goals in mind. One was we really wanted to challenge the outdoor sports community and say, you know, this is, this is a community I grew up in. Like right. I've, I've been in outdoor sports my whole life. Uh, but in so many ways, you know, we take our fun, our hobby, are good times from the outdoors but if we're only taking then it's a one-way street and it's extractive and how can we create a reciprocal relationship and through this film we want to showcase four different ways in which communities right now across BC are paving the way and showcasing these different ways we can connect with the landscape whether that's defending it rehabilitating it and standing up for it right and tell us about some of the stories you have I'm thinking of the um, the young woman who is the weaver mm hmm yeah for sure so each kind of rider takes you in and one of the riders they're all they're all like good friends of mine too, I was gonna which ask you Tom, of course <laughs> he's such a likable guy of course they're all friends of yours so, they're all awesome they're all doing great work for sure yeah Megan O'Brien takes us into Haida Gwaii so she has an incredible story um, she was a professional snowboarder back in kind of the early 2000s and she just completely left snowboarding when she started to reconnect with her traditional roots in Alert Bay in the Numgees territory and she got she fully dove into Chilkat weaving and just weaving and connecting with her culture and it's the film kind of touches on that story of like leaving the outdoor sports into the world of weaving and then her 15 years later through that process starting to work with mountain goat wool which was the initial fiber they made Chilkat blankets right. with and realizing she wanted to go back to the mountains but back as an indigenous woman and how much it changed her perspective and one of the lines that always sticks with me in the film she talks about you know before when she went into the mountains it was almost this performance ground like this playground where we showcased human performance but now when she goes back she goes back as you know someone that gets to interact with these incredible mountains and spaces and natural landscapes and there's real sacredness and because of that it changes your actual relationship to the place and so right. yeah it was beautiful to get to go uh, to work with her on that it's that phenomenal part. and it's also fun too i mean you're in bc so the water's a little cold <laughs> out there so watching like the surfers right who are in this incredibly cold water do you surf too yeah for sure of course yeah. you do so you surf too that's the boarding part like what yeah. snowboarding Snow and surfing what else do you do a uh, little bit of skateboarding you here do? and there. But just, did you yeah. start out as a skateboarder? Like where uh, did snowboarding. You, you did? Yeah. Okay. Like my dad and mom were kind of crazy. Really? Uh, first day in the backcountry they took me. I was 13 days old. Oh my uh, My gosh. dad put me in like a little stuffy and he went backcountry skiing. I think he got yelled at actually because they're You're like, still what are you doing? <laughs> you, Tomo. <laughs> and so I, you know, I didn't have a choice. I was going to be an adrenaline junkie and that's thanks to my parents. And mm. I'm thankful for that. You know, not only right. did it bring snowboarding, but it brought that love for the mountains and the oceans and right that connected connectedness that's so important um another part of your film that really stuck out for me was the fish farms mm -hmm. and so i was sharing earlier off the air how you know when i eat fish and i think a lot of us are aware of this now like if it's if it's wild cod if it's wild fish first can you just share a little bit about the difference of wild and the sustainable fish farms and then also it was it's intense in the film tomo to see like the salmon and how they're living in these fish farms, the disease, the deformities, and like people are eating those fish. Mm -hmm. Are we eating those fish? Are some people eating those fish? 
Yeah, for sure. And wow. unfortunately, like the fish farming industry, the market that's driving it is here in California because up to 70% of the farm salmon in BC that is growing there is sold to the California so market. So Washington's not doing it anymore? Uh, Washington kicked their fish farms out this wow. year, actually, in the past year because they had that massive escape. 200,000 Atlantic salmon escaped on the, the looked, coast of Washington. That looked like the ones that you feature in your yeah, film. Yeah, definitely. And escaped. <laughs> yeah. They escaped. Yeah. They, which isn't, which I mean, you might think, wow, that's great. They escaped. Yeah. However, these fish have viruses and things, and part of the issue is that they'll infect the uh, the wild salmon. For sure. I mean, it's an invasive species. You know, our governments are always saying, oh, don't bring these invasive species in, but they're literally legislating Atlantic salmon into the Pacific Oceans. That's what they're doing with this industry. And you know, salmon are such a sacred animal. They're so important. They are the backbone to the coast. You know, they've built the big civilizations that have existed on this coast for thousands of years. But not only that, like the reason we have huge west coast trees is because of salmon. Up in BC, you know, the big temperate rainforest, you can actually measure the size of the growth, growth rings, uh, tell you how big the salmon runs were historically, because they bring so much nitrogen and nutrients out in the ocean and the sunshine, and they bring it up the rivers, and over 500 animals take those salmon and bring it into the woods, and that what gives the nutrients to the soil to grow our big trees. So they're an absolute keystone species to everything we love about the West Coast. Farm salmons c came in about 30 years ago, and this is, I mean, what it is, it's, it's, the farm is kind of a wrong way to say it, because what these are industrial feedlots. 1.5 million fish in a tiny container, an open pen in the ocean. In the ocean. In the it's ocean. still part of the yeah. ocean. And they right. put these right on the basically the migratory path of the wild salmon and you know 1.5 million species i mean if you had 1.5 million of us in this room there would probably be some disease and virus going around right, right. but that is just flowing into the open ocean and it's affecting the wild salmon and ever since they've come to the coast the wild salmon have declined and so those images you talked about though like there's been a lot of resistance to fish farms since they came to bc people were against them right but well, it was and hard you to show capture that it. in your film the radicals why was it hard to capture just because of security and stuff no because you can't see viruses you can't see right. effluent are coming out all the waste um, so what happened was about last year a couple of the indigenous nations that had been resisting this industry for 30 years um, a couple groups decided to go occupy the actual fish farms to camp out there to showcase what was actually happening and they ended up camping out there for 200 days no and way. because they were camping and it's, it's that's not, some it's of not, the footage you get yeah, right yeah mm -hmm. we were out there almost the whole time and and you know it's not glorious you're camping on an industrial feedlot in the northwest right. pacific ocean like it is intense but because of that sacrifice they made we were able to put gopros into the pen and show what these fish look like and it was horrendous shocking yeah. shocking i mean really seeing it then I was like oh my god I mean occasionally if you're eating fish in a restaurant and you'll ask is it wild and then and I think we think about it more now but it also just made me aware like if you are in a restaurant it doesn't say wild you know wild Sam is do people by the way could they ever call these fish wild salmon? No. Okay, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. But definitely, I was like, I can't eat any of these fish yeah. ever again. <laughs> like, it's it, that's the power of your film, too, mm. the radicals. So thank you so much for creating that. Um, you also, one of the surfers is in an area that is, is it a, a mining? They're trying to open a mine, which we've experienced here. Mm -hmm. So I can relate to that firsthand. Um, what was that experience? For like. sure. So um, you're talking about Jasper. He's actually mm -hmm. the co-founder of Beyond Boarding he with is? me. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. So you have a buddy. You have a partner with this. It's partner a lot of work crime. doing a nonprofit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And we actually travel around all the time in our two vehicles that run on waste veggie oil and supporting different cool. causes and just being involved with our different projects. And, and the community he takes you into in the film is the community of Iskit, who we've actually been involved with for the last eight years. Um, and it's this incredible, it's the, this tall tan community up in the northwest coast in this area that's dubbed the sacred headwaters but i mean it's tall tan territory yeah and there's more moose and grizzly bears and wolves than people up there it's an incredible place and just through this fluke of geography there's the headwaters of the skeena nastikeen rivers all in the same place so three of the biggest undammed salmon bearing rivers in north america all start in the same place and that's exactly where they want to put these mines what wow which is what we're learning like we just i have the folks from the serengeti mm -hmm. that film talking about the predators and how that's uh really vital to our ecosystem and that's so pretty much doing having that dam it's going to interfere with all those top three predators totally 
yeah. huge ecosystem change. It's, I mean, it's a symptom that's happening around the world. Yeah. And what's so inspiring about that ISCA community and really even the radicals in general, we're not just showcasing what's wrong, but we're showcasing and shining light on communities that are doing something about yeah. that. So in the film, you meet this group that kicks out that copper mine uh, during the film, but they have a long history of doing it. This is the small group of grandmothers that have kicked out Royal Dutch Shell from the Sacred Don't Headwaters. Don't mess <laughs> with the grandmas, Tomo. That's, how did you create Beyond Boarding? Um, basically, you know, like, I'll admit, like, although I have, you know, a raging environmentalist as a grandpa, I also, like, my dad worked in some of the biggest extractive industries out there, and so, for me, I always escape. That's interesting. Yeah. Is that, is that his dad? Your no. grandpa? Or was that my on your mom's side? My grandpa was the environmentalist, my mom as well, and my dad worked for Shell. He worked wow. for McMillan Bloedel. Wow. And, but at the same time, he also gave me some of the most important lessons that I've ever had in activism. Like one of the biggest lessons he taught me was back in the day there was this huge fight on the west coast it's probably happening here too that was dubbed the war of the woods so it was the fight for the last bit of old growth in bc and basically like it was intense like logger like environmentalists were chaining themselves to trees they were building trails loggers were getting so fired up they were cutting up these trails and basically in the media it was talking about the environmentalists were causing the loss of all these jobs and so the loggers were right. extremely upset and the environmentalists were saying look we're down to like our last 10 percent of old growth we got to protect it and what my dad told me he's like you know actually it was my job that was causing all the unemployment the environmentalists are being scapegoated and all this because he was hired to go in and automate the pulp mills wow. so he would go in automate the pulp mills install a computer system and then they would do a test with the workers and they could fire up to 80 to 90 percent of the workers because they no longer needed them and at the end of the day, you know, the company took off billions of dollars off the coast. They took 95% of all the old growth, and there was no long-term jobs. Right, and of so course. Yeah, and so it was really a smoke and mirrors distraction, the actual argument we were having. So some of that's influenced the development of Beyond Boarding. Totally, yeah, it definitely has. Like our first feature film, which was, I think, six years ago now, six years ago now, explored the social impacts of oil and gas and how we, like, we have to think of narratives that are outside of just environmental activism because the environmental crisis is a byproduct of, you know, right. an economic system. It's we true. gotta talk about all its impacts. Right, right. Well, I think it's phenomenal what you're doing. I'm so glad that you're here at the Wild and Scenic Film Fest. What's been the, what's, I might have asked you this last night, but what's been <laughs> the wildest thing that's happened to you so far? Oh, the wildest be? thing. Because <laughs> we're at Wild and Scenic. I guess just the crazy adventure we've been on. I mean, I'll just tell the story of how we met the Iskut community because okay. it is totally wild. All right. So we were doing that project, Northern Greece, all about the impacts of oil and gas on communities. Um, and we were driving up through that area, the Sacred Headwaters, and it was three of us, long-haired snowboard friends in a school bus that ran on Waste right, Veggio. Right. And there happened to be this cardboard sign that said, Sacred Headwaters Music Fest. You know, you're a bunch of hippies in the bus, you're going to check out a music fest. Right. Well, it happened to be a country music fest, which isn't quite my favorite. I was say, do you like country music? <laughs> but we were the only non-tall like, tans at this festival. Wow. And we spent three days having a hoop but then on the last day they said hey you guys have cameras do you guys mind joining us we're gonna go way out onto our territory like super remote and our elders are gonna try to kick out a coal mine and we said oh we'd love to come for it it'd be such an honor we'll come for a day or two well eight and a half weeks later we were still there and we saw this group of elders kick out a coal mine that would have been one of the biggest wow. in bc Tom, and, and then so, you were able to capture that and share that for sure and we were That's we huge. were just putting it out to the media right away and because of that people were occupying the coal mining offices in toronto and it was just so powerful to see this small group of people um, protect an area that should be sacred to right. us all well, I think also, too, part of that is, well, you never know what's going to happen at Wild and Scenic, but you also <laughs> never know what's going to happen when you're, you know, when you're out and about and you're in the right place at the right time. Totally. So part of that is preparation. You had your cameras. You were like, you knew how to seize that moment and say, this is something important. <laughs> and that's a really big deal to be able to identify that and to know. So I'm sure there's going to be other things. What other projects do you have going on? Oh, well, we got a lot of things you going do? on. <laughs> okay. You gonna add more films? Yeah, for sure. All right. Yeah. All right. Stuff's are you gonna go? Work. Are you gonna go boarding at all while you're up here? I hope so. Have? There's a lot of snow that just fell. I it's know. gonna be hard to leave. I know. <laughs> Thomas gonna live in Nevada City, except when he's in his. You still have your biodiesel. Oh yeah. Man. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But you probably flew still down a dirt here. Still a dirtbag in some ways. <laughs> 
All right, we'll give you some veggie fry. We'll give you some French fry oil. That'd be great. I'll keep you going. That would get me out of here. That'd be get awesome. You out. Did you drive here? <laughs> no, you not this time. But we did okay. just drive down recently. That's yeah, cool. In our veggie trucks. So. Awesome. All right, we'll yeah. stay connected with us. And um, I'm sure you're going to come back again. He's one of the Cliff athletes, too. We didn't mention that. (laughs) Got to give a shout out to Cliff. For sure. All right. I'm Elisa Parker, and it's the Wild and Scenic Film Festival. Thanks, Tomo. Tomo Tomo Campos. The film is The Radicals. And there's more coming up. (laughs) 